We are in the PlayStation Theater in Times Square, New York, and this is the Shiny VIP Lounge. I have Ray with me, one of the speakers, one of the VIPs here, and I wanted to grab you and invite you to come in so that I and the folks that are tuning in live stream and maybe the archive can get to know you and what you do a bit better. And so please introduce yourself and tell us about uh, what keeps you busy during the day. Sure. Yeah, I'm Ray King. I'm the CEO of Top Level Design, and we are the registry for .design, .wiki, .inc, I-N-K, and as of last week, we won the license to also um, be the registry for .gay, G-A-Y. Yeah. And how long have you been in the domain environment? Is this a very long-term yeah. part of your career? Um, so I've had a few different companies, and um, I did a traditional software company in the 90s. I was in the domain space uh, from 2000 to 2006 with a company called Snap Names. We helped people acquire domain names um, that were dropped by other people, okay. um, like get first in line kind of thing. Sure. Uh, and then I spent five or six years in the wiki space, kind of a, away from the domain space, and the last uh, seven years has been back in the domain space. Okay, and how did you find out about this event? And was it a relationship with Jody or OpenSea, yeah. and, and why did you come? Yeah, so uh, Jody was a fellow new top-level domain applicant, right. um, and uh, so he has .cred, .ceo, and had before .best as well. Right. Um, and so he and I were going on the same, marching on the same path. Um, and we had applied for a number of extensions and you know, ended up getting the four that I just mentioned before. So Jody and I became good friends during the process. He's such a great guy. Yes. And uh, of course, he's got a lot of ideas and a lot yeah. of energy. He does. Um, so I'm really glad to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. And for you, uh, tell me, what was your expectation for this event? And what's the experience been like for you? Has it met expectations for you? Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, it's exceeded expectation. Um, so I'm probably a little different than most of the other folks in that um, I'm not really in, in the NFT space, right? I'm really the domain guy. And I was just on the panel discussing um, blockchain domains. Um, so I come from the traditional ICANN approved process. Um, and what's really interesting about domain names is that they are, they're unique assets. So they're, in a way, they're very close to the NFT space in the first place. Um, but the question really is, could you use blockchain technology to kind of, you know, launch a, a new extension without going through the ICANN process was, you know, a little bit of the focus of our panel. And uh, that is a very um, high mountain to climb, very, uh, for a lot of different reasons, because there's so much existing in infrastructure. You're talking about like replacing, you know. A dollar industry, it's not, a, it's not like they're playing the game. <laughs> right. We're really talking about, you know, major surgery on the way the system works. Um, that said, it's a really neat idea. Um, but I think the blockchain technology does bring some neat ideas to the domain space. This idea of being able to use it as a wallet, um, this idea of maybe, you know, being able to add some more intelligence kind of layered on the existing system. Yeah. Um, so I guess the question is, you know, what can be layered on versus, you know, can it, be re can certain pieces be replaced in their entirety, and I'm I'm not quite there yet on this on the latter. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, nobody really knows. It's true. Yeah. And I think that the people that have the strongest vision will drive toward um, making that a reality, and so that's why speaking about the future is always compelling for me. Tonight, I'm yeah. talking NFT 2024. Okay. So it's the five year, either I could say predictions or you could say just hopes for this part of the blockchain industry. And what I chose to do is interview as many of the speakers as I could before the events, all the videos you see on the reel. Okay. And that's why I set this room up, was to find out from you yeah. and the peers here, what do you believe it, this industry could be, should be, you hope it will be, you're driving toward this yeah. manifesting this in the five year period. MFT 2024, what are your thoughts? Well, I just, you know, listening to all the sessions today, I was, um, the thought that kept coming to mind for me was that you, you end up accumulating um, NFTs, right? And you've, you've got this thing, and it, it kind of tells a life story after a while. And this might sound a little morbid, but I thought, well, you know, maybe one day, um, you know, 
when I die, I'll pass that along to my kids and they'll pass along to their kids. And then at some point in the future, you might be like, oh, you know, here's a, you can kind of dig into the history and in a very, you know, kind of rich and different way than we've been able to do in the past. So I thought that was kind of a neat vision. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's very cool. As far as, um, is there a question you wish I would have asked that you wanted to answer? Tell me. Now, now is your chance to ask your own question and answer it. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think with regard to domain names, um, you know, do you see the, um, how much of the existing internet infrastructure do you see maybe going away with um, either blockchain or NFT technology? I want to know your answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only the que I'm the listener. <laughs> oh, I thought you said a question no, no, that I should I say, ask you. No, no, no. What question right, should I right, ask right. you? Uh, you answered that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think I I'm think here it to does. Listen <laughs> and learn. I think it takes time for things to change. Okay. Um, but I think the uh, the idea of being able to uh, exchange value and um, uh, and put contracts in place, especially like when you sell domain names, for example, it's actually very difficult to like rent a domain name or to have an agreement where people pay over time because there's all, it's just difficult. It is. Um, and it's yet hard. a domain name is a purely, uh, you know, it's a digital asset. So we should be able to govern those things more easily. So I think that will um, be greatly aided with blockchain and NFT technology. Yeah. I mean, I, I will answer the question. I, you know, I have over a hundred social media sites, really? or accounts okay. that I've built. Uh, many of them have over twenty-five thousand tweets or posts or whatnot. Nice. Um, I've bought and sold. I haven't sold very many. I've bought, you know, hundreds of domains. Usually, I just let them expire. I'm like, ah, I'm over that idea. But I have several dozen, and so I certainly see the connection. Uh, so I would just say um, that my thought on domains and on the internet is centralization, strips partial ownership, and definitely strips the peace of mind. Now for me, am I worried about my Facebook accounts, my Twitter accounts? Not really, but do I think I'm gonna pass my Facebook and Twitter URLs and accounts that I've spent countless amounts of energy right. onto my great, 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 great grandkids? Very unlikely. Right. Now, if you take social sites and domains and you think about them as NFTs on the blockchain, that's a much more stable opportunity that would allow me to feel some sense of like real worthwhile investment to build things for a legacy perspective because it's decentralized right. and there's just uh, a lot more trust and authenticity because of it. But I, would, I would agree with you when it comes to the social media sites because they are private companies. It sounds like it's a bit different for the domain. Yeah, it feels like with a domain name, it's a pretty lasting asset, yeah. you know, until the you know, the nature of the internet changes. Right. I don't think it's going to be taken away, you know, arbitrarily. Yeah, no, yeah. That, that, that's good. So, we'll go back a thousand years. Okay. To talk about the future. So, here's how I'll frame it. If you go back a thousand or several millennia, you have people of great influence and power. Let's say the great innovators, the kings, the artists, the emperors, yeah. you know, the, the, the greats. Confucius, Genghis Khan. The warriors. Yep. All the guys, right. Many of them had vision mm -hmm. to invest their life, their time, their money, their people, overcome hardship, uh, face adversity for something that would be a benefit many generations from their life. Like right. they didn't go and build a castle or go to war and think, I'm going to go to war and take over the world. They thought, I'm going to go to war and take over this region and then the next and one day we will be a superpower. But let's just go to castles because it's much more peaceful. <laughs> So for castles, a, a king has a vision. I build a castle on that hill. It's a several hundred year project, mm -hmm. meaning that him and his kingdom will invest their life into that castle. His grandchildren will. His great, -grand great, great, great grandchildren will. And they'll never enjoy it. It's just really basically this massive project that never ends until 12 generations from now. I feel like one of my biggest concerns with the environment of the tech industry, which I've been a part of in the San Francisco Bay Area for over 20 years, mm -hmm. is impatience. Mm -hmm. And the sense like everybody's in a rush for everything, to be seen, to be known, to be heard, to make money, to have power, to have position. To, like, it's always this sense of now. And I, I don't personally like that, I don't function that way. I'm like, there's a long life to live, and most of our life should be about what we do that we may not actually see manifested for our benefit. So my question to you in context of that, 
what castle are you building and why? Um, so that's a good question. Uh, I'm not sure I have such a grandiose vision, um, but I would like to play my part in expanding choice. So uh, .com, I think, is, is pretty restrictive in that people have to have longer and longer names to describe what they're doing. And to be able to use that space to the right of the dot to get a better identifier, you know, whether it's a dot design name because you're a furniture designer or a graphic designer, um, or whether it's a dot gay name because you want to use it as a uh, personal um, site and you want that to be part of your identity. Um, we want to give people more choice. A short identifier is a great way to identify um, yourself on the web, obviously, you know, websites, social media sites, things like that, but as well, also now the ability to exchange value. And that's why I think it's so cool to you know, have been a part of this conference. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was fun to interview you. Thank you for joining me. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, that was fun. Thank you for your attention. We're going to go to a quick video and be right back with another fireside chat.